Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cornerstone. My name is Sri, and joining me is Rob. So, Rob, you mentioned briefly fellowship, and you said you had something to share. Please enlighten to share. us. <laughs> Sri, as you know, I always have something to share. Um, you know, as we go through our weeks, I hope everybody has something to share, like from a spiritual perspective, like sure. something that um, is uh, just something exciting God's doing, or maybe some kind of righteous, even anger taking place in the, in the world we see, right? But something should be stirring us up, right? Hopefully yeah. it's the Holy Spirit that, uh, that's, that's moving and just thriving in our lives and just having an impact on us, you know? Fair enough, yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, just some of the things I've been experiencing lately, and it's, and it, you know, some people like to call it coincidence, but I don't believe there's just, that coincidence is a real thing uh, no. relative to God and his, and his uh, sovereign will. No. But um, so yeah, uh, we're at the very end of Acts in our study on Sundays, and um, we're in chapter 28, and, Paul's about to make it to Rome there, right? Mm. And it talks about how, like, as he made it to Italy and um, some, he met up with some Christians there that were there, uh, yeah. the, the brothers and sisters, they came out to see him. And, he, mm. and it says that he was encouraged by that. And mm. then when he gets closer to Rome, the Christians from Rome itself come down outside the city. They went out of their way to go greet Paul and spend time with him and things like that. And, and he was encouraged by it. And I just think I just think about what fellowship means to me, and I know what I'm, I'm going to assume too. I'll give you a chance in a second to touch on this. What fellowship means to you, and for Paul, it it meant spiritual blessings, hmm. right? And there's all kinds of reasons that we can get into and why we sh we need to be in fellowship. And here's my concern, though. I've come across a lot of people uh, recently, in the, just in the last couple of weeks that are talking about how they're really comfortable um, having online church, spending that time at home. Because look, we're, we're very busy, aren't we? We're a busy people, our culture is busy. And then all of a sudden, because of this pandemic, all of a sudden, now I found this two hour window that I didn't have before on Sunday mornings. And you know what? I'm really starting to enjoy this. I can just have church at home and I can sit here and drink my coffee and stay in my pajamas or what, you know, whatever. And then you can kind of get used to it. Why can't I have church at home? Because isn't this what the world's telling us right now? Even some in the church are saying this church. It's not the building. It's the people. Right. And so in a sense, there's definitely truth to that. That is the church. We're the body of Christ. Jesus gave him his life for the body. Right. Um, so, yeah, in a sense, that's how church functions. But is that really the way God intended it to be? Because we all know what it's like to be in a fellowship, to have corporate worship and, and the experiences that happen there as we unite uh, with that oneness in, in the spirit. And um, I'm just concerned about that there's that there's people that have just that are going astray because you can only watch online for so long. Like I can imagine people were doing it a lot at the beginning when the, when the lockdown happened and all that and, and everyone was forced in. But, uh, but what about now? It's like some, not all churches are meeting. Some are just doing limited services because it's recommended that they don't sing and things like that. Um, but I'm, I'm concerned about the people. Uh, have, have you had any experiences like this or have you had any feelings like this, Sri? Let me just throw it over to you. Yeah, look. Um... For those of you who don't know, I do teaching online because the university has now got online and offline teaching. It just so happens that I'm doing a lot of online teaching. And for me personally, I spend a lot of time online on Zoom and whatever the other platform, right? Now, while that has served the purpose of doing my job, if given the choice of attending church in person or online, I would attend in person. While there was a time when church had to go online because of restrictions and to keep this pandemic in check and whatever else, I accepted that. I joined and I tried not to get distracted, discouraged, disheartened, but I did not want it to become the norm. And you're right. 
for many people who have now realized that they can kind of be comfortable at home and kind of join in. Nobody is watching, nobody is seeing my engagement. I'm just there. I can kind of take it in as much as I want, walk away if I don't feel like it. There is mm -hmm. a lot being lost. Yes, I agree with people who say, Christians who say that the church is not the physical building, it's the body. But then I would also challenge those very people and say, it's the physical body versus the virtual body. Yes, the virtual body, it is impossible uh, and it is ungodly to say that the Holy Spirit cannot work through Zoom or whatever platform. It's, it's impossible and ungodly to say that. But Jesus gave up his physical body for us. You mentioned that earlier. And in the same way, I believe, just like in the book of Acts, you asked me what fellowship means, I go back to the book of Acts. I look back at the early church and the early church. And again, Paul enjoyed physical fellowship with the believers, be it the ones he met in Italy or the ones who came down from Rome. There, there is a special blessing. There is a special encouragement. There is a special way that the Holy Spirit, I believe, works when we are uh, doing fellowship and doing church in person. The only reason we are doing this via Zoom is because you're in New South Wales and I'm here in Queensland. But I guarantee you, if we were living in the same city, I wouldn't want to do this remotely. I would want to sit down and have the setup such that we are actually in the same space because I believe there's something of value that God does when we are gathered together. And so for me, I share your concern that many Christians uh, well-meaning Christians are not recognizing that their faith is slowly being eroded because they have come to accept online is good enough for me. And even though my church is now meeting offline, as long as they allow me to connect through Zoom, whatever, I'm good with that. And then I wonder, will they go find another church if, say, their church stopped? zooming or doing virtual services well i, I do want to say i saw a uh, a, a quote from uh, john macarthur out in california and he said um, his ministry is supplemental it's not meant to take place of your local fellowship so i, I love that i might even uh, i might even copy that for myself uh, the bible does talk about not forsaking the fellowship uh, uh, the forsake gathering together right yeah um, and it also, you mentioned early Acts in 242, it talks about how the early Christians, they continued steadfastly in fellowship. Mm. Um, so, of course, it's important to, to gather together in that sense. Um, and, what, and for what purpose? Uh, we're the body of Christ. We're to be building each other up. So we're to be util utilizing our spiritual gifts. We, want to, we need to be laying hands on one another and praying for one another. Um, we gather together for communion. Th that's a public demonstration of the, the body and blood of Christ, right? Um, and then the other thing uh, that happens, uh, you talk about the eroding away. And when you take away the immediacy of the preaching of the word, I, bring, I believe it brings about uh, feelings of isolation. And, you know, of course, we're not meant to walk our Christian walk alone. And, um, um, yeah, and Christianity is not meant to be private. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not meant to be a private thing that you just keep to yourself in, in um, the comfort of your own home. Mm -hmm. and, because that's where you're going to leave it. To be honest with you, that's where you're going to leave it. You're going to leave it right there on the table. And there's no accountability, right? It, it's hard. How are we going to encourage each other? I mean, really, we're not making the, are we really making the phone calls and, and like looking after one another? And to some extent, we, we might be, but um, I mean, we're not living that out. You know what I mean? That like in the same way it can be done if we're, if we're in person. And of course, if I was up there or you were down here, um, you'd be at a distance, not because of the virus, just because um, for other reasons, you don't like to shower too often or I don't know, but just, <laughs> hello. Well, I uh, like the so manly. Manly stead, you know, send, sorry, not stedge, send. There you go. 
We'll, we'll, we'll call it that. A cent. Yeah, sure. Now look, let's now let's be real here. At the same time, I know there's other voices probably screaming out right now. Yes, yeah. there's a virus going on, and yes, sadly, people have been infect, uh, infected, affected negatively mm -hmm. by all that. So we want to be smart, right? Mm -hmm. If you're one of the vulnerable ones and you need to be wearing a mask, wear your mask. Um, keep going online if you know if you're in that vulnerable group. But if you're staying back for those other purposes, for selfish purposes, and not engaging the body, mm. right? We don't, I mean, we need to engage the body. We, we, if you neglect the body of Christ, you're being hypocritical. Mm. Would you say? What, right? Because well, we're, we're all members of the body. You mentioned isolation. And, you know, I read an article the other day, or was it something on video, maybe, an article or something, a news item that talks about the isolation that many people are going through, especially singles, and especially here in Victoria, here in Australia, where the cases are far higher than everywhere else, yeah? So there is an isolation that people in the world are experiencing, but just as dangerous as that, as that isolation is, you know, eroding of the mind, mental health issues that probably are skyrocketing and we have no idea as to the, the yeah. true impact of what's happening, Within the Christian faith, imagine what this isolation now does, not only the physical and emotional impact, but the, the spiritual impact, because there is a very real and supernatural enemy of God, of Christ, and the believers in Christ, who is not going to care whether you're young or old, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are in Australia or India or anywhere else. His sole intent and desire is to destroy us. Now imagine if we are not only physically isolated, but spiritually isolated. We are easy picking. Yeah. That's what the devil does. That's what Satan does. And so there is a far greater danger. You know, the spiritual erosion that I mentioned is perhaps just the start. The dangers are probably piling up. And unless we are in fellowship with one another as much as possible in person, how can we you know, know how well we are traveling, whether it is physically, mentally, emotionally, and last but not least, spiritually. I think there's so much that is lost when it is just online. In fact, even when I'm doing my, uh, you know, teaching online, I tell the students, look, I'm not just showing up online just to share what I need to share, do what we need to do, and we are out of here. I specifically mentioned to them, you need to let us know what's happening with you. Is there stuff that's going on that's going to impact not only your studies, but your life? And I feel that when we don't meet in person, we are in terrible danger. And I know it just sounds alarmist and crazy, but I think that danger is so subtle that we miss it until it's too late. I mean, well, people might hear that and think that it's maybe an overreaction, but I, I don't know if we're really at that anymore. I mean, in, initially, if, if one hasn't considered this type of thing, because that, because again, we're hearing those voices, people are hearing those voices from the world saying, why can't you just pray at home? Well, how come Daniel couldn't just pray at home and, and just keep that in the privacy of his own home? Why? Why? What was the, what was the big deal? It seems like such a small thing, doesn't it? If your relationship can be private like that, why didn't Daniel do it? And I, I also brought this up on Sunday about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why, what, is it really a big deal just to bend the knee and just appease the king? You know, because look, because we could say amongst ourselves, you know what, it's not really a big deal. We don't mean it. We're just doing it. Let's just keep the peace. Is it really worth trading our lives for this kind of thing? So in a sense, it seems like this small thing, right? Don't compromise on the small things, though, mm. all right? Because they're, they're big deal. It, it is yeah. a big deal. It's a big deal to God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you compromise on the little things, if you're not faithful in the little things, Jesus said, well, how can I, um, you know, hand, hand over the big things to you? If we are not going to be faithful in Christ in the little matters or in the so-called simple matters in the little matters, that is how erosion kind of happens, right? I mean, I, I, I don't know if you've heard of this example. I, I, and someone shared with me a long time ago, if you take a sharp piece of rock, and have one drop of water falling on the sharp end of that rock, little by little, slowly by slowly. At first, you might not see any difference, but the truth is when you look closely, that sharpness 
is actually being eroded little by little and give enough time, that single drop can actually dull the sharp rock. How is it any different with our faith in Christ? It's no different. It's like when you're, when you're at the beach and you're, you're on your boogie board and you don't realize that the tide is kind of taking you, taking you away. And then, you, you know, you turn around, you look at the land, you're like, how do I get all the way over here? Right. Because there's slow, subtle changes. Yeah. But you know what? The guy on the beach who's anchored in and still, he can see you moving, right? All right. <laughs> and, and, you know, and you, you talk about, uh, you know, the, the guy in the beach and then for shepherds of the flock, whether it is, you know, your church or me, even though I don't have a church, there are people who have put in my care, whether it is my family or close friends that I minister to, whoever it may be. We are not shepherds because it's a great title and a well-paying job and we can brag and boast about it. God has laid on us, on our hearts, the calling of the shepherd. He is a great shepherd. Jesus is a great shepherd. And he has appointed us to be shepherds of whatever flock he's given us. And we are the ones, we are sharing this about fellowship to Christians who are out there watching and listening. This is, we are not trying to be alarmist. We're not trying to be scaring you. But to a great extent, our prayer, my prayer, is that you will hear these words and allow the Holy Spirit to ring the alarm bells in you if you need to hear the alarm bells so that you will take that step to draw closer to Christ and especially draw nearer to the fellowship and not forsake it, as the Bible tells us to. And so we are making this call. We are standing at the beach and saying, hey, hey, come back. You're, you're straying. You're going drifting. You're, yeah, you're in yeah. danger zone. Come back. And that's what we are doing. I mean, really, what, what, do, what does, uh, you know, Rob, what does he gain? What do I gain by scaring you? Are we trying to tell you, oh, you should come to our church or you should come to our ministry? Nothing. We are servants of Jesus Christ. We are servants of the Lord. And we are merely sharing with you what he is putting on our hearts. None of this is scripted. None of this is scripted. Yeah, I, There's I no remember, outline. I remember way back in the beginning of all this, and I suspected that people would kind of fall into different categories. You know, when everything shut down, um, some people would just wait out. Just, you know, I'll, I'll go back to church whenever it opens up and just put everything on hold. And, and um, you know, other people, maybe more mature believers, uh, you know, are there faithfully, they're watching online, maybe they're, they're doing their part and making phone calls, sending emails, encouraging one another to keep going, praying for people and being faithful in that way. And making, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that Christians in, in general um, were doing that. Yeah. And maybe even are still doing that. But yeah. the reality is, when did this all start? In March? So, mm -hmm. and we're, we're about to hit September. It's been six months. Yeah. So how long are we going to put this on hold, right? Because we, yeah. don't, we don't know what's going on. Let's, we, let's not put things on hold anymore. Let's get back to church. Let's get back to the fellowship. Let's, mm -hmm. let's get back to where it was in day one when you were encouraged and you were motivated to uh, do, you know, serve the Lord. We're, we're here to be servants. We're not here to, 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 to be, be served. served. Right? We're, here, to we're here to serve. Yeah. So let's start looking at how we can start being a benefit to the body that we can encourage right. one another let's get back in fellowship let's pray for one another um, in whatever capacity that you're able to operate in but let's right. do that make sure that's you're right. doing what god's calling you because if not you're 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 neglecting the body you're neglecting his will you're not showing love for one another how do they know you're christians by your love for one another right that's right and that's something that happens when you're in the fellowship with other believers that's right. And of course, that fellowship is meaningless if you don't have fellowship with Christ himself in the confines of your home, in that personal relationship. So it starts with the personal relationship with Jesus. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Is Jesus your Savior and Lord? Have you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course? So there's that personal relationship. And so if you don't have that, today is the day. Now is the time for you to draw near to Christ so he can draw near to you. And for the Christians out there, what is your personal relationship with Jesus like? It's, I'm not talking about what other people see. I'm talking about what does the Lord see behind closed doors? Are you spending time in the Bible, the word of God? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you staying in touch with believers? Are you doing what the Lord wants you to do as the Holy Spirit prompts you? So it all starts there.
All right. Well, um, I think that was a, a very great point you made there. Um, I like how you always swing everything back to Jesus Christ, because that, that's our foundation. He's our foundation, and he's the one who leads and guides our decisions. And hopefully we're praying for wisdom and how to um, move forward out of this pandemic thing. If you haven't already, maybe it's time for you yeah. uh, to, to, to move on. So um, let's um, let's pray. Yeah. And um, and we'll hand, we'll give these things over to the Lord and um, see what what he would have for us. And and I pray that everyone listening now would just use this as an opportunity to open up your heart, open up your mind a little bit, and let's be open to what the Lord has, because it might not be in the direction that you have been thinking and planning and how you've been operating this whole time. So let's give these things to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for this time of uh, virtual fellowship, um, even with, with its limitations, Lord. Um, but we love you, and we want to give uh, live our lives sacrificially for you and that could mean um, doing things that are against our flesh and um, you know our bodies sometimes tell us we just need two more hours of rest or you know my mind needs a rest from studying or reading and you know but and through all of that we neglect the body of Christ we neglect the word of God we might even be neglecting prayer and all these things, Lord, but we want to stay focused on you, Lord, to have our relationship established firmly in you and your grace, and that there would be an outlet for that, that you would use us, Lord, to be servants in your kingdom as we give our lives wholly to you, Lord. I pray that um, those that are on the fringes would come back in, Lord, come back into the fellowship and, and um, into the ministry and servanthood of Jesus Christ. Lord. So uh, we give all these things to you, Lord. I pray that you would just move in our hearts and our spirits, that we would um, just be open to the things that you have for us, that we would be obedient, not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And, um, you know, may that new beginning start today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Um... Thank you, everyone, um, for joining us again. To all who are watching and listening, thank you for your continued support. And um, thank you, as always, Rob. All right. Yeah, we'll see you next time, Sri. And uh, right. everyone have a blessed week. All right. Okay. See you, everyone. God bless.